Hey everyone, April Dunham here. In this video, I'll show how you can create a filter control and use that to refine the results in a gallery in Power Apps. But first, here's the intro. In my Power Apps search boxes video, I showed you how you can implement a simple search box to filter the results in your gallery, similar to what we're seeing here. I have a list of tasks. I can go into the search box, search for creating, and it filters the results based off the title. That's great, but what if we want to take this task list and filter the results based off status, so whether it's pending or complete? That's where a filter control will come in. There are a couple different ways that you can implement a filter control and I'll walk you through each. The first way is with a gallery control. So we can come in here to our insert, go to gallery, choose one of the gallery templates. In this case, I'll choose a blank horizontal. And in your gallery, you can just click and insert a label control. Just situate that and make it look right according to how your app is branded. So for this filter, I just want to filter it based off either all task, pending, or complete. So I'll come into my gallery, go to its items property, and I'll just manually type those in. Obviously, if you have a data source that stores this information, you can just point that directly to that instead of manually typing it in. Now that I have my values, I can click on the label control, go to its text property, and change it so it points to the value based off of my items. So you want to make these look more like clickable buttons. So first thing I'm going to do is come into my gallery and I'm going to put in a background color on the gallery itself. So if we click the color property, I'll give this a grayish background. And then the next thing I want to do, since this is a gallery, if the item is selected, I want it to be a more bold color versus the other ones that aren't selected. So I know easily which item I have selected. We can use a property of the gallery. So if we click on the gallery, Go to the drop down. You'll see a property called template fill. This will be the fill for the item within the gallery. And we can put in a formula in here to dynamically set the color. So we can delete what's in there now, type in an if formula, but we can say if this item dot is selected. So that will be a Boolean to tell us if this item is selected. So if so, we can make this dark blue. And if not, maybe we'll try Alice Blue. All is selected by default. I select pending, it's dark. So now I can easily tell which item is the selected one. Now the text on these other ones uh, doesn't really blend in well. So we can kind of copy that same formula that we have in our template fill and apply it to the label and go to the label's color property, paste that in here and just change it. So if it's dark blue, then the text looks good white. But if it's that Alice blue color, then we should have it black. So now it just blends in better there. So now that we have our options, we just got to wire that up to our gallery so it filters. Now each of these tasks have a status field in it and the value can either be pending or complete. There's not a value of the status all. So to accommodate for that in the gallery that we're wanting to filter, we need to have an if statement. So right now all we have in here in the items property of this task gallery is we're filtering it based off of what's in the search box. So let's just remove that for now. And let's start by doing an if statement. So we wanna check what the selected value of our filter gallery is, which right now it's just called gallery five. So we'll say if gallery five dot selected dot value equals all, then we can just leave the formula that we had in there. So it was the filter my training list where starts with title of and whatever is in our search box text. Because in that case, if it's all, we want everything to show, we don't need to filter. But if it's not, then we need a separate filter. So if it's not that, let's copy this same filter because we still want to be able to have that search box filter. And I'll make our formula bar a little bit bigger here. And I'll use one of my favorite features of the formula bar, which is this format text button. So that's easier to read. All right, so if it's all just filter based off the search box, but if it's not, we need that filter in addition to 
another one. So we can have, after this starts with, two ampersands, an and operator, and we can say and status, which is our status field in our data source, equals gallery five dot selected dot value. So now this will filter based off of whatever we have selected in our gallery and also the search. So that's all we have to do here. So let's play this. So all is selected. We have six results you'll see. If I go to pending, it filters it down to five results. And if I click complete, it filters it down to one. So very simple, easy filter box. And this works in combination with our search box. So if I search for intro, for example, it filters the results for me. So that's the first way that we can do this. And this way is good. The gallery approach is really good if you have, say, less than five, maybe 10, but that's kind of pushing it, items as options. Because if you get any more than that, it's just too crowded to have that many buttons that you click to filter it. So in that case, if you have quite a few options that you need to be able to filter by, a drop down and or combo box would be a much better option. So that's the second way to do that. It's gonna be really the exact same. So we'll just delete this gallery and we'll show how to do this with a drop down control instead. So we'll come in here, go to our insert tab, input and drop down. We'll just drag that up here. And in its items property, we'll just type those same values that we had in our gallery. And the filter query for our task gallery will be the exact same, except this time we're pointing it to our dropdown instead of our gallery. So we'll just remove this and point that to our dropdown dot selected dot value. And do that same thing down here in our filter query. All right, so that's all we need to do. Let's just play this. So all is the default. Change it to pending, it's five, complete one. So it works perfectly. Now, obviously you could have multiple of these different combination of filter boxes. So we can have one for the status, maybe have one by who it's assigned to. Um, it's just a matter of adding in another one and then adding in in your filter query, another ampersand, and then where your field equals whatever is in that dropdown or gallery. I hope this gave you another tool to add to your Power Apps tool belt. If you found it helpful, please like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video.